Chapter 3 We've got to get back before it gets dark, or we'll be watching the doors. Claire shook the limp man between them in exasperation. I don't know why we've... We've even brought him this far, Adrian complained, his breath coming in gasps. It will be hard enough to sneak in ourselves without trying to hide him as well. So we should have just left him there to die, after he saved our lives from, from whatever those things were? Adrian scowled. No, no, of course not, but we'll never get away with it. He's probably a pirate anyway. Where can we possibly hide him? And if we do, how do we know he won't cut our throats for our trouble once he's recovered? Adrian was panting too hard to carry on. We can hide him in the girls' dorms, Claire said stubbornly. All the others are away on holiday, so no one will notice. Great, so all we have to do is sneak a fully grown ma pirate into the girls' dormitory, open a few locked doors, and hope no one notices him. If we time it right... You mean if we're lucky, he countered, adjusting his steamed glasses with his free hand. So you want to leave him here? I'm still carrying him, aren't I? Adrian snapped. I'm sorry, Claire, I don't mean to shout, but there's no way we can get away with this. It's the first time I've seen you ready to give up. I never said I'd give up, but someone's got to be realistic around here. Yes, leave him. It's me you should thank for your lives in any case, Echo beamed from a nearby branch. You see what I mean, Adrian growled, working hard to retain his scowl. That's all we need. He thinks he's a hero. Claire complained, struggling with her own grin as much as the limp man's arm around her shoulders. Come on, the pair of you. If we stop yammering, we'll be there in no time. Adrian readjusted his grip and continued plodding along next to his sister. The rest of the journey was too tortuous to allow for more talking, and by the time they reached the school, it was nearly dark. The creaking of metal and amiable humming told them Sam the caretaker was about the business of closing the outer gates. We've got to get through before he locks up. Claire whispered urgently. I know, but how? Can't you make him look the other way, distract him somehow? I don't know. It's a dangerous thing to go messing with people's perceptions. Can't you try? Claire pleaded. Yes, I could also leave him blind or mad if things go wrong. And that's not mentioning what might happen to me if they go badly wrong. The jingle of keys reached them through the gathering darkness. He's going to lock up any minute, Claire hissed. We've got to do something now. I'll try, Adrian whispered grimly. He let his burden slump and focused his power. Before he could touch the caretaker's mind, an explosion of cursing broke his concentration. What in seven hells? Give back my keys, you monster, you! Please hurry, he's picked up a rather large stick. Echo was projecting the taste of the iron keyring on his prehensile tongue in a definite sense of panic. Shouldering his load, Adrian scurried towards the gate. Now, let's go, quickly! Miraculously, the two children and unconscious man managed to pass within twenty feet of the exasperated caretaker, who was thrashing the ivy vigorously with a stick. As soon as they were out of sight, a grateful gecko allowed the keys to drop and scurry deeper into the thick leaves in search of a tasty and hopefully soothing spider. I hope I got you, you brute, the caretaker shouted, still half-heartedly tapping the wall with his stick. Perhaps I've let the ivy get too overgrown if it's harboring beasties like that, he muttered. Gods, he's heavy, Adrian said. He gave the unconscious man one more tug, but failed to move him any further up the bed. We'd just better hope he doesn't bleed through your spare cover. I don't think he's bleeding any more, just dirty. Besides, who cares, that's Violet's bed, Claire smirked. Perfect, upset someone who we can trust to keep her mouth shut, Adrian commented sarcastically. Can I help it if she left the latch off her window before going on holiday? I hope you're not relying on that excuse. I don't have to rely on anything. How could I get into a locked room without my clever brother? It's not like I can turn the tumblers just by thinking about it. Hardly just by thinking about it, Adrian said, annoyed that his hard work had been so simply dismissed. Or have you forgotten the last half hour? Is it my fault you're so slow? No, but until I met your pirate friend over there, forcing locks was something I'd never had to do. I had wondered why you risked the caretaker seeing us if you could just have opened the lock when he was gone. Adrian shrugged. I didn't want to sit in the open, trying my luck. 
We'd no doubt have been noticed or missed roll call. In fact, it's late enough now. We should be to supper before someone comes looking for us. Adrian bent to unfasten the pirate's weapon belt. Help me with these. Why are you taking his things? Claire asked, eyeing the damp bundle in Adrian's hands. I'd just as soon he didn't wake up in a strange place armed. Even if he didn't mean to, he could cause all sorts of trouble. I guess you're right. We can hide those under my bed for now. Adrian frowned. He'd hoped to have a better look at the pistol and sword, but it would be easier to simply hide the man's gear here in the empty dorm rather than trying to sneak it into the boys' dormitories. Okay, he conceded. Now let's go before we're missed. What if he wakes up before we get back? He might make a noise. I'll leave Echo with him. He'll let me know if anything happens. Adrian closed the door behind them and stood the lock into place with a push of his mind. Fine, leave me locked in with a homicidal maniac, Echo complained from the rafters. I believe you claimed you could handle yourself these days, Adrian thought back. Just because they tried to bond you to a cat, don't think that all familiars have nine lives to waste on you. Bill Stark awoke as the moonlight began to fall through the window above his head. His good eye revolved once in its socket. He took in the room, assuring himself that there was no danger before he allowed a single muscle to twitch. When he did move, he regretted it instantly. His body was a mass of scrapes and sprains, and every movement had to be paid for. Most men would not have noticed the large reptile skillfully blended with the beams above him, but Bill was not most men. You can tell your master I'm awake now, Longtail. He addressed the lizard amiably. Tell him to bring my bag and my weapons if he don't want an unhappy guest. Bill grunted as he rolled out of bed. He walked over to the door, whistling a jaunty tune. Don't pretend you can't speak, Lizard, he added without looking back. Not pretending anything, Echo projected sulkily. Good, you're master on his way. He's coming. He has to excuse himself from dinner. Tell him I'm just getting my things myself, then. Bill produced a sliver of metal from a sleeve and started working it in the lock. In two moments, the door swung open and Bill sauntered out, showing no sign of his exhaustion or wounds. I knew a girl in Aquitaine and never went to France, he sang under his breath as he strode down the corridor. Ignoring Echo shuffling behind him, he walked unerringly to Claire's dorm room. And one in Paris who ne'er refrained from charging for a dance. He broke off his singing as he worked his pick a second time. The door gave as easily as the first. Stark headed straight for Claire's bed and reached underneath. But the finest maids in all the world are found in London town. A thousand sailors stunk at night, yet still eager to go, Ah, oh, that all seems to be in order. Bill broke in on his own singing and examined the contents of his pack. Where's your master, lizard? He asked, drawing his sword and wiping the blade on a cloth from his pack. I shall tell him not to come if you don't put up that weapon. I mean him no arm, frog. Bill laughed. It just don't do to let your blade marinate in fin blood for too long. So saying, Bill slid the now spotless blade back into its black sheath. Now tell young master... What? Echo supplied. Tell young master Watts and his sister... Bill gave the wooden bowl by Claire's bed a meaningful look. That I have a proposition for him. Tell me yourself, Adrian said, entering quickly. He stood defiantly in front of the tall buccaneer. Where's your sister? This concerns her too. Bill allowed himself the luxury of sitting back down on the bed, which put him roughly at eye level with the youth. We couldn't both excuse ourselves from dinner so suddenly. It would look too suspicious. There were enough raised eyebrows at this, Adrian pointed at the puckered scar on his cheek. Could have been worse, Bill said, dismissing the wound. And it could have been better if he'd never gone to that ship in the first place. But you did. And what's done is done, as they say. No use crying over spilt wine. If you say so, Mr. Stark. It's been captain before this day, boy. Now, I know you've had a bit of a shock, and you want me here about as much as a weevil in a biscuit, but let's not get disrespectful. Well, captain, we'd both like to thank you for your help at the ship. We've done as well by you as we can, but my sister and I are both orphans here. I'm sure you'll appreciate any further association with you is a risk we cannot afford to take. So I should just go off and me lonesome, disappear or good-natured like, Bill raised an eyebrow. Not fit company for lubbers now, am I? Adrian took a step backwards as the buccaneer loomed over him. Don't mistake me, lad. Bill held up both his hands. I know I can't stay here. Got no particular wish to in any event. But you should know that it comes as no surprise to me when you say you're orphaned. I knew that as soon as I clapped eyes on you both. What do you mean? Adrian asked, confused. A quick mental probe met a resistance as solid as a stone wall. 
Nah, I'll not be giving you what I know for nothing, young adept. Bill smiled. I've had worse than that try and scrape these old brains in my time. Though few as strong, not properly trained. What are you talking about? Adrian demanded, his wariness of the pirate momentarily overridden by his impatience. They spread the blood thin, you see, Bill continued with no apparent concern for Adrian's annoyance. Only come across it here and there. Would have destroyed it, but they need it too much. Adrian scowled. What's all this talk of bloodlines? I don't know what you hope to achieve here, but if you have something to say, just spit it out. Are you claiming to know our family somehow? He had no idea why the pirate would come up with such a strange story, but he couldn't deny the hook was well baited. What orphan didn't hunger for some clue of their proper place in the world? Couldn't claim to know who your parents were, Bill replied. But I know the next best thing. I know where you came from. Adrian couldn't suppress a snort of derision at that. The self-styled captain really was milking this nonsense for all it was worth. I come from Amorica, like almost everyone else here, unless you expect me to believe that I'm from Britannia like you, he said. Even if that were the case, the only real implication would be shame for my ancestry. Bill's expression momentarily soured, and Adrian started to regret being so blunt. But then the rogue's annoying smile returned. Would that things were as simple as that, my young firebrand. But I am no more from Midgard than ye or your sister. Oh, and where are we all from then? Adrian's voice was rich with sarcasm. Atlantis, you have heard the name, boy. The look on the man's face stopped Adrian laughing, but only just. I can see you believe that, he said as calmly as he could. However long the ship had been at sea, it was clear that the crew had turned to drinking salt water, and Adrian had no intention of arguing with an armed madman. Don't humour me, lad. I know you don't believe me. Why should you? That land has faded into legend to all beyond the inner sea. Once, four islands stood close to the great rock of Rupus Negra. But ours sunk long ago, dragged down by treachery into the dark well known as Thor's Draught, where all oceans are drunk. Bill's blue eyes stared through Adrian, looking into something impossibly distant and forever lost. Negra's where they'll take you if you do not heed. The Black Rock. I don't expect you to understand, not being of the Brotherhood yet. But if you'll take my word, we are blood. The cast of your face, the colour of your hair screams that fact. Thank you for letting me know, Captain. I'll be sure to be careful. You've been a lot of help. Now let's talk about getting you back home. Adrian hoped he could mollify the obviously deranged sea dog. Listen to me, you pup. I'm neither mad nor lying. Negra is real. To my shame, I may even have brought you to their attention just by being here. Well, if you're putting us in danger, then that's all the more reason to leave. Adrian pressed. Bill slumped in resignation. I'll leave, sure enough. But you must heed my warning. It is the least I owe you. You have power and Negra will come for you. If you have any sense about you, you and your sister will come with me. But failing that, I will at least know that you have heard my warning. Even if all you say is true, what would you have me do? If you stay here, your doom is certain. You are strong and they will claim you. Oh, come on. Who will claim me, Negra? I've never even heard of it. Everything you've told me sounds like something out of an old yarn, and you've been less than forthcoming with the details of that. I don't know why you want to scare me, or how it would benefit you for Claire or I to join you. But you'll have to be a lot clearer than you've been so far if you want me to take you at all seriously, Adrian said. There was a long pause, and Adrian began to wonder if the pirate had simply tired of his fiction. Then Bill spoke. I have told you who seeks you, and why. Ever was the blood of the Ember Isle thick with sorcery. It is too rare for them to waste. Those who serve Negra must have already sensed it. Whether you know it or not, you are being groomed for their service. My presence has only hastened the process. You think I am trying to frighten you, but no words of mine could adequately explain your danger. Worse awaits your sister should you stay. And where should we go? Why should we trust you? You say there are people that wish my sister and I harm, but it's you who's trying to take us away, Adrian accused. I know you still don't believe me, lad, but this is the simple truth of the situation. You're in terrible danger. I'll not pretend that I don't want you to come with me, at least your sister at any rate. Without a navigator, I'm as trapped here as you. But if you can bring yourself to see reason, we could leave this place and save you both. Your birthright, what is left of it, is not here but on the open wave. I offer you safety, guidance, and a share in all the treasure we may snatch from the clutches of tyranny. 
tyrants like the Duke. Adrian offered the pirate the chance to damn himself out of his own mouth. Ay, Bill agreed. Though he be but one of their lesser vassals, there are many worlds over which they have dominion. So it's a new world now to go with drowned isles and made-up lands, Adrian snapped, forgetting his caution and outrage that the buccaneer should take him for such a fool. The only truth you have spoken is that you need a new navigator, and you're hoping my sister will fill the role. I'm sorry to disappoint you on two counts, Captain. Firstly, we have worked too long and hard to make a future for ourselves for you to tear all that away with your tall stories. And secondly, though she works hard, my sister will never be more than a mediocre navigator. Adrian didn't enjoy admitting that truth, and he would never say as much to his sister. But if the fool was under the impression he could judge his sister's ability by his own. You are wrong, Bill said simply. Her blood is strong. Adrian threw his hands up in exasperation. Why do you lie? Why not simply pick the first pilot at the docks or book passage on a ship? Why try to scare us into giving up our lives? Is it that you are too poor to do anything but try and take advantage of an inexperienced girl? Perhaps that's it, Bill said. He drew his hands from his pack to reveal a palm full of date-sized pearls. Or perhaps I've risked much to warn an inexperienced boy too wrapped up in what he's been told to see his own danger. A stranger tells me to give up everything I've worked to achieve and I should just believe him, Adrian scoffed. What about believing your own eyes? When have you ever seen the like of the creatures we fought today? Are they from your world? Many mariners have brought back tales of merfolk. I had not believed such stories were true, but even if they are, they're not a license for you to proffer any fantasy and have it taken as fact. Moreover, I begin to question whether what we believed happened in the ship ever really happened at all. You were there, were you not? Was I? You say you have encountered power beyond mine. Perhaps that's true. Your own, for instance? What? Are you so set on staying that you won't even trust the evidence of your own eyes? Bill protested. Is it really so unreasonable? As you say, such creatures do not belong in the real world. How can I be sure you didn't plant the idea in our minds? To what end? You think I was just standing around in a half-flooded hole waiting for you to come along? Particularly if I have the power you claim. Bill's argument stumped Adrian for a moment, until he remembered the pirate's interest in Claire. You've already given your reasons away, Captain Stark. Whatever else you might be able to do, you still need a navigator. Whether you encountered us by design or chance, you could easily have divined Claire's abilities, and now you hope to lure us with talk of unknown danger and promises of adventure. He put his head on one side. Tell me, Captain, did I ever go into the ship, or did I simply wake up on the sand remembering that I had? Even as he described this possibility, Adrian became more convinced that the pirate was also an adept. It explained why he couldn't read him, explained the vile creatures in the ship. It explained everything. Bill stared at the boy for a while, then shook his head. If you truly think this of me, I cannot prove my innocence, he said softly. I do not ask you to prove anything one way or the other. Simply leave my sister and I alone, Adrian said firmly, sealing his mind against any assault. You do not, cannot understand, Bill murmured, trying to hide his disappointment, lest it seem to the youth that his barbs had struck home. You are the older sibling, he said, changing tack. By minutes, but yes. And your training is further advanced? Bill asked. Yes. Then I must respect your wishes as head of your family. Will you at least tell your sister what has passed between us? No, she doesn't need to hear such nonsense. It could only upset her. Adrian sensed that whether mad or malevolent, Bill had given up his attempt to take them with him. I ask that you tell her. You cannot know what you risk on her behalf. I don't want to hear any more fabrications. If you are ready, I'd like you to leave. Adrian pointed towards the door. As you wish. It's your family and not my place to question. I only hope they do not take you both. Before Adrian could protest at this veiled threat, Bill shouldered his pack and straightened his coat. I wish you well, Mr. Watts. And if I may give you any advice on the path you have chosen, it is this. Do not become so intent on where it will lead that you forget where it has come from. With a flourish, Bill Stark strode past Adrian and climbed onto the window sill. Despite the three-story drop, he swung his body out into space and lowered himself on his hands until his booted feet found footholds in the rough stonework. Adrian watched him descend. Wait, he called down to the retreating climber. What can I do for you? Bill looked up. If I'm wrong and you did save our lives, thanks, Adrian said, sounding feeble even to himself. If you would thank me, keep yourself safe, lad. There's few of the pure blood left, even in the Brotherhood. With that, the buccaneer picked his way nimbly down the wall, at a speed impressive to all but amateur, Echo said, watching him scale the ivy on the outer wall. 
I'd have been over that by now. I know you would, Echo, Adrian said, watching the one-eyed man climb. Are you sure he wasn't telling the truth? Echo asked worriedly. Even if he could fool you and Claire, how could he have cast a glamour on me? I know you think you're above such things, Echo, but he can't be telling the truth. He just can't be. When Claire returned to her room, her spare blanket was crumpled in the washing basket and Violet's door was locked. She knocked a few times but received no answer. Echo was nowhere around and Adrian had retreated to the safety of the boys' dormitory, which meant she was going to have to wait for morning before she could ask after the welfare of the pirate who used the blanket. She knew the signs were not good. Adrian had excused himself early and not bothered to try to contact her. Something was up. She did not dare to move around the dormitories at night and she had no way to open locked doors. Claire had to swallow her frustration and accept the mystery. It seemed strange to her that Adrian would not tell her what had happened. Secrets between the siblings were rare, and Claire fell asleep fighting the fear that her brother, who would soon be sent away from her, was already becoming a stranger. <laughs>